raise our heads up. We believe in the spiritual part of our lives, and we become strong. Sometimes we just don't practice. And success is about practicing, working at it, having information. Sometimes we use the phone the wrong way. Most of the time when I pick up the phone, it's to gather information. I call it Professor Google. <coughs> research, research, research. I don't care about talking to someone or texting. I want information. You grow by information. One of the other challenges, and you saw it at the end, was very they are profound is that even when you're successful, you have to prove yourself over and over and over again. The bit of Destiny Shaw successful. Turn in the first album, all the executives said, no, go back into the studio. But you have to have the courage, the social courage sometimes. And we want to talk about social courage. It's a little different. You have to have the courage to say no. And you have to have the social courage to say yes. You know, when you try to move in this box, y'all give me a hand and try to move. So we ain't getting no loss in it. What What keeps you from moving? The corners. The corners of the walls, right? The walls in our head. The walls that are in our head. That's what keep us from moving. But when you step outside of this box, now you can move around the box, right? There you go. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. So the key there is about box in thinking. Every day, box in thinking. People tell us what we can't do, not what we can do. And then there's other things like building a team. Then there's ego that gets in the way, right? I'm going to give you a nugget. You will remember this one. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. <laughs> Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. That gives you a new definition for ego, right? <laughs> Might be a few people in here with ego, son. Deadens the pain of stupidity. So guys, I want to, before we do the questions and answers, well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll I think uh, Dr. Baldwin is going to, oh, there you go. He's going to facilitate the question and answers. Should I say it or should I say it? Entrepreneurial and there's intrapreneurial. See, I'm a G. Y'all didn't know that. <laughs> intrapreneurial is when you work in an organization and you might be the dean or you might be the president of a corporation and you run that like it's your business. So, entrepreneurial, intrapreneurial skills are all around us. We must have it, it should be taught. Everywhere. Good afternoon, Panther fans and family. My name is Tony Hall, and today I have the privilege to speak with the Dr. Matthew Knowles. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm excited about being here. Wow. I had a 
wonderful session. Everybody was engaged in the audience. I'm, I'm just very pleased. Man, I'll say this. You are a man who wears many, many coats. You're an author, a professor, an entrepreneur, an executive manager, and founder and CEO of Music World Entertainment. Well, I'm blessed. That's the word I'll use, blessed. Wow. That's, that's so amazing. I was doing a little research on you, and I saw you went to Fisk University. I did. I graduated from Fisk. I shared that I had never been to a black school before. Wow. In my junior year, I transferred from the University of Tennessee um, at Chattanooga. I transferred to Fisk. I uh, was a basketball player. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, really enjoyed myself. I had, again, wow. never been in a black surrounding, so it was all new and different for me. Wow. So. I see that you got your degree in economics and, and you were in sports and business. So what made you transition from that area to music? Well, you know, I shared the story today. I, after leaving Xerox, I sold MRI and CT scanners. One of the first blacks to do that. Then I was a neurosurgical specialist with Johnson & Johnson. And I was having a procedure. I got paid by the overhead hospital paging system, which is not good. I thought maybe we had lost a patient, but when I got to the surgeon's office, he said he could not use my instruments because of the cost. And at that moment, I, I knew it was time for me to make a transition. Today we know it as managed care, uh, but back then it was the first generation of managed care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I knew whenever I was gonna sell cost, that's to me what being a salesperson. Yeah. It's being a robot. Anybody <laughs> can walk in and say, hey, mine's is $10. <laughs> um, well, as you can see, you're on a college campus. And as college students, we come in with this mentality thinking that we're going to do one thing. But like you were saying in your lecture today, you were talking about figuring out what your passion is. So as college students, how exactly do we figure out what our passion is when we're really just trying to get a degree at this point now? Well, there's this one thing in your life mm -hmm. right now that you are excited about. Right. That you wake up in the morning, you think about it, you go to sleep thinking about it. What is that for you? For me, I would say it's interviewing. It's this moment right here that we're having. I have always been the type of person to want to get to know people just a little bit more. I've always been that kind of person that loves to build rapport. And I can't lie, I literally love waking up just talking. <laughs> I love it. And I can tell, it shows on your face. Thank that you. smile, your face is lit up. Thank you. When you said your passion. Thank you so That's much. when you know it's your passion, when it lights you up like that. Wow. Like when I'm on the stage and I just, I don't know, well, they hit something on the, the, the teleprompter. Teleprompter. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That's not what I'm feeling today. Right. It's how you feel in the moment that right. gives you that excitement. And so I'm proud of it. It's very clear for you, for me, to see you and say, this could be the next Oprah. Wow. It's crazy you say that because Oprah has always been a role model to me. And just you saying that, she's letting me know I'm on the right path. You're on the right path. Thank you so much. Um, my next question has to deal with being uncomfortable. So I understand you grew up in Alabama. Mm -hmm. All my family's from Alabama, and I understand the whole dealing with the racism and, and all of that. So when was the moment you realized in order for you to succeed, you had to become comfortable being uncomfortable? Well, that's, that's a really deep question. Um, I don't think you really ever become comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. you try to tolerate it right as, as best you can right. but uh, for me it was all those days and you know early you know late elementary junior high right. uh, it made me better I, I remember my first day in junior high Lisville junior high school it was a thousand white kids it was six of us and that first day of class I never forget his name, Mr. Jones, was an English teacher. And I read a paragraph and I made a mistake. And this whole class laughed and threw spitballs. You know, it made me a better reader. 
I took from that that you won't laugh at me again because I'm going to really focus on reading. Wow. That is so you take that negative and turn it to a positive. Right. Wow. And I, and I feel like that's something everybody needs to learn. Um, I want to kind of talk about you being a professor. So I understand you did teach at... The other school. Southern, no, yeah, I was going to say the, the other school. We won't say the name. Yeah. But that other school. <laughs> that other school. For eight years. For eight years. For eight years. And I taught at Rice for one year. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what brought you to the, to the classroom? Huh. Well, it was a combination. Um, the then president wanted to have this entertainment degree. Right. And so we named it ERM, Entertainment Recording Management right. and School Communications. Uh, and she felt in Houston who would be better qualified to lead that new program than myself. And so I was asked. Uh, I had already started doing lectures uh, at certain schools and so I actually at Fisk in 2007 I, I, I taught there for a year. I would fly down from New York. So I really enjoyed a classroom because I, I think there's two types of professors. There's those that are uh, really academia, book, book, mm -hmm. book, book. Yeah. And then there's those like myself that we come from a real place of knowledge and we don't need a book. Because when I leave here, I got to do what I talked about on the stage. Right, right. You know? So it's organic. And I, I think that we don't give students enough credit because you guys know what it's like. Yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> you guys know when it's put. Yeah. Wow. Um, my last question. You're such a huge influence in the media industry, in the entertainment industry. Can you tell me a time where you have failed at something, but you had to turn around and bounce right back? And how did you come back? Oh, I failed a lot of times and stuff. Um, I always think about Jagged Edge. <laughs> I when, I, the jagged edge. When, when I used to manage Jagged Edge, <laughs> that was a failure. I thought that uh, I could have Jagged, I managed Jagged Edge right. and Destiny's Child at the same time. And I thought that it was a wise idea to cut cost, mm. that I would have them on the same tour bus. Wasn't a good idea. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. That not wasn't all. a good idea. You'll learn out more. You'll learn more about that from uh, Destiny's Child Untold Story that'll be out in June. Wow! Exclusive next, right my, here. My next book, Destiny's Child: The Untold Story. Wow! Because wow. you, you so think y'all know why Destiny's Child, uh -oh. Child broke up, but y'all really gonna find don't out know. You're gonna find out the Ooh, truth. Ooh, we're gonna find out the truth. I'm, I'm a huge Destiny Child, Beyonce, Solange. I love your family, to be honest. Well, thank you. And I, I just really want to say. Thank you so much for taking the time out just to talk to me because this this is monumental. And I, I just listening to your lecture, I learned that you love pouring into people's lives. Yeah. And I thank you so much from the bottom of it's my heart. It's organic. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. Thank you so One much. One day we're gonna see this lady. Remember I said it. <laughs> She's gonna be all over TV. Yeah. Watch it. Today. 10, 12 minutes after 5. <laughs> right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Guys, my name is Tony Hall once again with the one and only, the dad of all dads, I'll tell you, Dr. Matthew Knowles. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.